pictures of life. You talk about dimensions when you talk about something in that nature. You talk about what are the dimensions of that thing? I mean, how wide it is, how deep it is. The Bible gives the dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant. It tells the Bible the dimensions of it, how wide it is, how deep it is, what it's made out of, the dimensions. And also, you hear them talk about the dimensions of the Ark. God gives the measurements for the ark, different things. God gives the dimensions for them. You know, God gives us something that's uh, precious. Man, it's life. And we wonder about life sometimes. And I know a, a lot of people uh, wonder about the length of uh, the length, the length of life, and uh, how long life is. Whether it's uh, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, we know the Bible makes reference to a span of life in Psalms 90, uh, three score and 10, or by four score as a reason of strength, strength of a, a score in the Bible being 20 years, so three score would be 60, and then 10 more would be 70, and then four score would be 80, measured it in a span of 20 years. So, uh, and then we know if, uh, we, we hear a lot of people make reference to uh, the length of life. So we know that everywhere in the Bible there's a lot of dimensions given. Not only the dimensions of length and the dimensions of measurement. In the Bible, a cubit represents 18 inches. Some theologians vary out to be 25 inches according to who you read. Uh, you know, some commentary vary out to be 18 inches and some 25 inches. But that ain't really a big deal whether it's 18 and 25. It doesn't really matter um, uh, a whole lot. I think. All my study, and I've always studied it out to be 18 inches. But uh, I, I, I remember correctly in the dates study Bible, it bears it out to be 25 inches. So that's a little bit of a discrepancy right there, but it ain't uh, no big deal. But a cubic is a unit of measure, so we want to get that out of the way. So we know that uh, when we talk about dimensions, we talk about a unit of measure. We know that the Bible says that no one is promised tomorrow. So uh, we know that, that we're not promised tomorrow. We're uh, the Bible says we shouldn't swear uh, by our own strength or whatever because we're not able to guarantee nobody tomorrow. Amen. Amen. You tell somebody, hey, I'm going to be there tomorrow. Listen, you might not be there tomorrow. I know that uh, experience I've had with different people, different ones. I uh, bought a tire for a man one time and told him to come back and get it on Friday. And, uh, hey, he had a massive heart attack that night and he was gone. And, uh, hey, Called and told me, I said, hey, I know he wasn't planning on leaving, but he was planning on selling me a tire Friday when he got back with it, but uh, it didn't work out. You don't ever know. The dimensions of life. And then we talk about life, we talk about some of the scriptures that uh, it's in the Bible that Jesus brought out uh, about uh, life and having life more abundantly. The adversary cometh but for to steal, kill, and destroy, and take away, uh, uh, put and take away in there, but when you steal, kill, and destroy. He don't want you to be any kind of success in any dimension of your life. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy you, tear you down. But Jesus said, I come that you may have a life and have it more abundant. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So in our life, we're going to have some experience. Amen. And I hope that in, 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 in being born as an experience, amen, growing up, and adolescence, all the way from to your teenage years, uh, only to your adult life. And we have milestones all through our life. But we know the Bible says that once is appointed unto time unto man, the time to die. And then the judgment. We know that, amen, just as a man is born, he's on his way to death. So that's the dimensions of life. We don't know nothing about the dimensions of life as far as lifespan. But I want to talk to you tonight about dimensions of life as far as the fullness of it. The fullness of life. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? What makes you happy? Praise God. What should make you happy? We should be joyous creatures. Have a good talk with some guys today at work. We got to talk about human nature. Uh, things we fight against every day, flesh and blood, fight against human nature. Uh, things of this world that come against us. And hey, listen, we just fight against it. All of these are dimensions of life. Amen. Let's read in the scripture. I'm going to read this old chapter to you. I want you to get it. Praise God. Very familiar scripture, Matthew 
chapter 6, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, therefore when thou doest thy alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do. In other words, when you do something for people, hey, you don't run around saying, hey, I give brother so and so fifty dollars every day and night. I'm just breaking down simple. You don't, you don't run around saying, hey, I went to Harvey's and bought fifty dollars worth of groceries for so and so. They didn't have no groceries. Right. You don't do that. It's bad. Do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of him. Verily, but truly, I say unto you, they have their reward. In other words, if you do that, that's all you got. That's all you got is a man's reward, a man's pat on the back. Listen, friend, I'd rather go unnoticed. Amen. A lot of people don't even know God's spirit. But that's all right. I'd rather go unnoticed and be effective, amen, and get a hand pat on the back by me and be, be lifted up by me and then be rejected when it comes to the time to stand before Christ. Listen, friend. We got some things we got to work on. Verse 3. But when thou doest the alms, let not thy left hand know what the right hand doeth. So it should be instantaneous. We know in the scripture in the 25th chapter of Matthew and Judgment of the Nation. Amen. Jesus Christ asked the question of the sheep and then on the goats on, as the same on the left. This is in the 25th chapter of Matthew. In the Judgment of the Nations, you'll find this. He said, When I was sick, you did. Y'all know that scripture. And it goes on and on and on. They said, Lord, when did we see thee? And he said, You do not unto the least of my brethren. You do not unto us. We see this. And he also asked the question of the same of the ones on the left. And we know tonight, praise God, we don't want to be on the left, praise God. Amen. I want us to be on the right side, praise God. Amen. Amen. Listen. That thine alms, and I ain't preaching about alms tonight. I guess we're going to just read this old chapter. That thine alms may be in secret. That thy father, listen to this, which seeth in secret. Himself shall reward thee openly. So when you do something for somebody, you keep it a secret, give it yourself, protect their dignity. You know, we talk about the tithes and all the different forms of giving, and we know that, uh, that you're supposed to protect the dignity of the people that you help. So, amen, if you do these things, not expecting a hand pat, not expecting a reward, amen, God says he'll bless you, praise right God. Not only, amen, he'll bless you, but he'll bless you openly. People will be able to see, praise God, that you're blessed. Amen. Praise God. How in the world are they doing all that kind of stuff? How are they doing this? How are they doing that? How they got that? Amen. Listen. Amen. When you do things for people, praise God. Amen. With no expectation of man. Amen. But of an expectation of God. And God said he bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's why we do these things. Listen. And when thou prayest, listen, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets. But they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. In other words, so if you pray and you pray, you know, beautiful prayer, there ain't nothing wrong with having a beautiful prayer, there ain't nothing wrong with having a raggedy prayer. Uh, I don't know if there's a such thing as a raggedy prayer, but some people might say, well, you know, you don't pray that good or whatever. I don't think there's no such thing as a good or a bad prayer. Only, the only reason Jesus says this is a bad prayer is because of vain repetition. In other words, they're speaking to be heard of men. People should not pray to be, be heard of men. It don't matter if you pray an hour long prayer, but if you don't have any substance in that prayer, and I talked about faith, these are dimensions of life. Whenever we pray, we've got to have substance. And what is that substance? Amen. Praise God. What does it say? Is the substance, come on, is the substance of things hopeful? Praise God. Faith. Amen. Praise God. So when we pray, amen, we move a great big awesome God, omnipotent, all knowing, all seeing. He knows our desires of our heart. He knows before we ever pray what we have need of. We're going to be discussing all of that. Amen. So this is the things, amen, praise God, the dimensions of our life. Yes, we be born into this world. Each and every one of us is given a life. And what we do with it from the time we're born to the time we die is the dimensions of it. Just not the length of it, amen. But what did that person do? That's right. in Jesus. You know, there's a lot of references in the Bible about life and length of it. Mm -hmm. So it's only a 900, you know, some odd years. Whatever about it, somebody live 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, we see today. Amen. But we measure, we think about the dimensions from one end to the other. But listen, <coughs> let's really look at the dimensions of it. What did they, what did they do to you? A lot of times it really don't matter to the point of how long they live. What did they do with what they had? We understand that when children pass, or young people, they don't have as much opportunity 
as say somebody my age or somebody some of y'all's age or whatever to do whenever we know to do and we have an obligation to do and we don't do. So that's a saying. Listen. <clears throat> Where am I at? Verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Very I say to you, they have a reward. So that's the same thing. Talking about two different things. Amen. First few verses, he was talking about giving. Now he's talking about praying. Let's go to verse uh, uh, 6. He said, But when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Sounds kind of like giving, don't it? So he says, whenever you give, give in secret, amen, and the Father or, you, or, or he'll bless you openly. Now he's telling us whenever we pray, if we'll pray in secret, we'll pray and seek God on the behalf of other things. We don't have to orate and have a, 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 a loud prayer or a prayer uh, lifted up. We can pray to the Father in secret each and every one of us should be doing that every day on a daily basis. We should have a prayer closet relationship with the Father. Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. I hope y'all get this. Well, I'm just doing it right off the cuff. Amen. Praise God. Listen. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So it don't matter how long you pray, but it matters about the content of that prayer. I always remember my pastor said when he went down, he, got, he prayed a prayer a repentance prayer, you know, Lord, come, come into my life and save me, amen. He got up from there two minutes, hey, he was done and over with me. He walked in for 40 plus years, amen. Praise God. So they don't take all that and get saved. I know some churches, they pray for folks for an hour and an hour, they never get it. And they come back to the altar and they never get it. But it's possible to get it in just a matter of a minute or two or a second or two. Any time you believe, I believe God will be right there. The Spirit of God will you, make you alive. Praise amen. God, amen, and bring you into a new understand and praise God who you are and the dimensions of, of the life that you're living. Amen. Turn your heart around make you white as snow. Praise God when you get up from that altar and go back you a brand new creature. Praise amen. God. Amen. Praise God by the blood that washed you clean and white. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. God. Amen. Then takes charge. Amen. And starts dealing with your life and moving you. Amen. From one place to the other as he sees fit to use you. Praise amen. God. Amen. Just tear it up tonight. Amen. But we got, we got some content here. But listen, verse 7. Hey, Be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. Whenever you go into the prayer call, amen, and pray, he knows what you have need of before you ask. I already said that. In this manner, therefore pray ye our Father. Listen to this. I want you to understand this prayer. And to this manner, therefore pray ye our Father. That gives us, as we pray and we recognize him, amen, that we have a Father. How many of you know we have a Father? Praise God. Amen. amen. Our Father, which art in heaven. How many of us know that he is in heaven? I think amen. Seen there. Amen. Many prophets. Amen. Uh, I've seen, seen him there. Amen. In that place. Praise God. John praise saw God. that city coming down. And it says there was the tabernacle of God. So that tells us, amen, that's the house of God. Amen. The place where God lives in that city, that new Jerusalem. Praise God. Amen. That's going to be the throne room of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad. So we recognize our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. So therefore we give a reference to the fact that we know he's omnipotent. Amen. He's just. He's sovereign. Praise God. He cannot lie. He cannot uh, 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 he, he cannot be tempted by evil. Listen to me today. He is all-knowing, all-seeing. Praise God. He is God. And you're the prayer of one or the prayer of ten thousand. Amen. Praise God. So we pray our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we know today, amen, that his name is Satan. Praise God. Amen. amen. It's the name, amen, above all names. Praise God. God. Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll make a reference to. He said, I can't come. come. You know that one day that I got a high expectation tonight as a Christian. Praise God. I've heard it preached many times. I've heard people say, hey, I'd be satisfied with a cottage. I've heard saints say, hey, I'd be satisfied with just a, amen, a little place, a shack or a shanty. Not me, because the Bible says in my Father's house are many mansions. These are the words that Jesus spoke. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Praise God. Amen. amen. And that is my expectation. Amen. 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 I ain't going to be satisfied with the cottage because that ain't what it says. Amen. And I believe this word of God to be true. Amen. And I believe, praise God, it to be infallible. Nothing wrong with it. No way, shape, form, or fashion does not. Amen. One part of it. Amen. Uh, uh, degrade another part of it. Amen. Praise God. It's all true. Amen. And I believe it tonight. Praise God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. How many of y'all know that the 
will of the Father will be done in earth. Amen. How many of you know how his will gets moved around on this side of eternity? It's by people. The will of the Father is done by people that receive, praise God. Amen. People are commissioned. I've been commissioned to preach, praise God. Amen. I've been commissioned to teach the Word of God. Amen. Other people have been to teach, uh, commissioned to teach Sunday school, be evangelists, to do these different things. Amen. have been commissioned. Amen. To build the kingdom of God. Amen. How many of you know that whenever Jesus Christ comes back, he's coming back for a church? Amen. Amen. He's coming back for a church. Praise God. The Bible says, the Bible says for a church that has made themselves ready. Amen. Without wrinkle, without spot. How many of you know that it takes preparation to get without wrinkle and without spot? Amen. We've got to prepare ourselves. The Bible says, Jesus said this. Amen. I go away to prepare a place that where I am ye may be also. Praise God. Amen. So we're going to have to be prepared. Amen. To be entering into that prepared place. Praise God. I don't believe nobody's going to trip, stumble, and fall into heaven. Amen. I believe tonight, praise God, you're going to have to have intended. Amen. To go there. It ain't going to be no big surprise one day at the end of your life. Amen. You're going to lift your eyes and you're going to be in heaven. It's going to be a big surprise. Amen. Tonight, I've intended to go there. Amen. Listen. Thou will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Praise God. That ties God to it, don't it? Amen. And it goes back to what it tells us in uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Or maybe 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Amen. That we can know, praise God, that we please Him on the side of eternity or on the other side. Amen. We can know here today that we please God. Amen. Praise God. It's going to be in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. We can know that, praise God, whether I'm going to be absent from the body or present with the body, we can know that we please Him. Praise God. And I believe that tonight. So listen here. Listen to what He says. Give us this day our daily bread. This is according along with the prayer. How many of you know we ought to be satisfied if we've got enough to eat? Amen. Praise God. We ought to be shouting if we've got enough to eat. Praise, Praise God. God. That's the glory of God. Amen. A lot of us in here has got more than enough to eat. Mm -hmm. Amen. A lot of us has got enough to eat. Then after we eat, we can go to the refrigerator and get us an ice cream bar. And go to Amen. Sit on the couch and eat. Amen. Or whatever. Got enough. Got plenty to eat. Listen. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Listen to what he says. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Amen. So now we know what Jesus was talking about when he says seven times seventy. How many times you forgive a man? Seventy times seven times seventy. That's kind of like a amen, a, a prelude to a every time coming to ask you I would think. How many times am I going to make a mistake amen between here, amen and my final day? How many mistakes am I going to have to ask the Lord to forgive me for? Amen. If I want the Lord to forgive me for all my state mistakes, amen, then i got to prepare myself, amen, during the dimensions of life, amen, to be somebody, amen, that'll forgive, praise God. Amen. amen. we got too much, amen, too many people, too many families, too many churches are divided, amen, by hatred, but yet it's still people coming to the house of God, amen, and don't like somebody. I don't know anybody tonight, amen, that I hate. There's some I like better than others. But there ain't nobody that I want to try my best to help. But call me. Yeah, I've been done wrong by some people. Like, but you know what? If they call me and they say, Brother Scott, I need. Hey, Amen. You know what I do? I rise up out of my chair and I go and I try my best to help. Amen. 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 Praise God. This is forgive the debtors. Amen. It ain't just people that owe you money. It's people that hurt your feelings. Hey, forgive them. Amen. Move on. Don't be captured by that. The adversary is looking to put a noose around somebody's neck. Amen. With an emotion. People are held captive, amen. Their whole, amen, their whole life, their whole Christian walk, amen, is being held captive by the adversary, amen, because of an emotion. Praise God. Praise God. Don't let the adversary have control over your life in that manner. Forgive them. Move on past it. Glory to God. But Brother Scott, you don't know the details of it, amen. They said I was fat and I was ugly, amen. Well, listen, praise God, forgive them anyhow. Brother Scott, you don't understand. It'll be a thousand dollars. Forgive them. Right. Amen. Praise God. Move on past it. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't let a thousand dollars take you to a devil's hell. Right. Amen. Amen. A thousand dollars is important. Amen. That's ten and one hundred dollars a
have the power to forgive. Amen. We have that power to forgive our better. Whether they forgive us or not, that takes power. It takes power to hug a man's neck or somebody that's done you wrong or mistreated you or, or, or whatever. It takes power. Amen. It takes power. Amen. Listen to me. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So if we have an expectation of forgiveness, we each and every one of us in here has got a debt to God. We owe a debt. I mean, Jesus Christ paid our sin debt at Calvary. Praise God. And we cling to that hope. Amen. Of Jesus Christ paying that sin debt. Amen. That it'll make us, praise God, righteous enough. Amen. To be able to stand before. Amen. A solid God. Glory to God. Amen. To be able to stand there. We know that the Bible says every knee of our and every tongue. Amen. Shout confess. Amen. The glory to God. I believe. Amen. After the confession. Amen. It's made. Amen. We'll be able to rise to our feet. Amen. Glory to God. And enter into that place. That prepared place. Listen to me. When we talk about dimensions, I want to talk to us about boundaries we set. A lot of these things that I've discussed are things and boundaries that we set. We choose not to forgive. Mm -hmm. We choose not to lend or we choose not to uh, help somebody out or buy somebody some groceries or whatever. You have opportunity. But I was talking with some folks to, uh, today a week and I made reference to this. I want to make reference of it tonight. I mean, if this fact, I mean, if you tell somebody, somebody comes to you and they say, well, Brother Scott, this is where I asked y'all a couple of Sundays ago, where was the cutoff point? Because I don't know. I mean, some pastors I talk to, they say, well, you tell people you ain't got the money for that or whatever, uh, you know, and, and you don't do that or whatever, but then, then I wonder where uh, that falls in. You know, you say, well, people's going to take advantage of the church or whatever. And I know we've been taken advantage of uh, many times, but listen. I mean, I'd rather be taken advantage of for the Lord than I had to have a pile of money in the bank and right. saving it up for the old devil. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. And I, as pastor, have to give an account. Well, hey, you know what, preacher? You was a good steward over that money. Y'all had about the X amount of thousands of dollars in the bank. And there was people right down the road from you hungry. Amen. Amen. Listen to me tonight. Amen. Amen. What do we want? Amen. We want in our lives, the dimensions of our lives, amen, to be consumed, amen, by man-made ideas, amen, we want to fall in love, amen, with our God, amen, that gave his only begotten Son, amen, freely, glory to God. Right. Amen. Amen, to pay a sin debt that he did not owe. That's right. Amen, to be spit on and ridiculed and, amen, degraded, amen, to a point, amen, praise God in his body, amen, he was so, amen, so deteriorated under the hand of the, amen, the scourgers, listen, that his body was so, amen, abused, amen, and he was not even recognized the meat and the flesh hanging over the bones, amen, he took that, amen, and glory to God, amen, and when a preacher calls, amen, for the elders of the church, amen, and they should rise up to their feet, amen, and shout with glory, amen, and we're able to come into the sanctuary of God, amen, and believe, hallelujah, and believe on them stripes, amen, that he yes. took the cap. That's right. Amen, right. Amen. Praise God. Jesus. Every, every religion ain't got that. That's right. Every religion, amen. Uh, some of us got, I'm going to call them mascots. We don't have a mascot. That's right. We have a true and risen Savior. He's a bright hand of the Father. Amen. 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 Praise God. But so many other religions, they got mascots. They got people that's supposed to be an equivalent of Christ or whatever. You know, the Buddha and all these different things. I won't go into no detail on that, giving no honor in the house of God. But I will tell you this, praise God. Amen. We got one, praise God. And we got a high expectation. He's the firstborn of the resurrected, praise God. I believe I'm going to be resurrected. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. He's in the presence of the Father. He said, you can sit with me in my throne, even if I sit with my Father in his throne. Praise God. Amen. I want you, amen. I'm looking for something, praise God. I will not be defined, amen, by the limited, praise God. Amen. Thinking of my own mind. Praise God. Amen. I'm talking about the dimensions of life. The boundaries we set. Listen to where I'm at. Where am I at? Verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Oh, I'm on 13, I think. And lead us not into temptation. Forgive us our debts, we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. What does Paul say? Amen. A man is thrown away of his own lust. Mm. All desire draws away. Our own lust. Listen. That's 
why he's telling us to put our mind under subjection. Mm -hmm. Control our mind. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I told him, some guy today, I told him, I said, the word of sin comes in. There's nothing wrong with admiring the beauty of a woman. Amen. Because that's a natural attraction. That's what God made us. He made a man and a woman, and he made a man, amen, to desire a woman. Amen. amen. Not another man. That's an abomination. That's a sin. Amen. So he created his human nature inside of a man. That's why that's the worst kind of perversion he ever was. Amen. Because it ain't natural. Amen. amen. I said, but now, there's nothing wrong with admiring the beauty of a woman. Amen. But anyone that's whenever you want to take it to the next level where the sin comes in. Amen. Can you have your mind under subjection? Amen. Yes, I say. Amen. Tonight, you can have your mind under subjection. Trespasses. That's pretty good, ain't it? That's pretty black and white. 
Amen. If you forgive people, say, well, I don't know if I could forgive them for that. Amen. Friend, let me tell you something. You better read them two scriptures. Well, they don't a bad thing. People think it's such a big thing when a mother forgive a man that killed her daughter. Well, listen to me, friend. She's got to. But the world looks at that. Oh, man, I would never forgive him. He killed my daughter. Amen. Well, listen to me. Amen. That's a dimension of life. Amen. That you would have to deal with. Amen. That would keep you out of heaven. Oh, I don't believe God would keep somebody out of heaven for not forgiving somebody to kill their daughter. Listen to me, friend. I never read it to you. Or their son. A lot of mamas and daddies sitting at home tonight got young ones ain't here no more because of drunk drivers. They got to forgive. How many of you know if you don't forgive, it consumes you? Then it builds up to be a hate and it consumes you. Listen. Moreover, when you fast, Lay not up for yourself treasure upon earth from off and rust and corrupt, and where thieves break. 
break the road and steal. How many of you know if you got a thousand dollars in your house, somebody breaks in, amen, they suddenly steal it away from you. You ain't got it. Amen. But praise God when you do something for the Lord, as I'm talking about, amen, with a willing heart, amen, as a willing vessel, praise God, amen, to do honor to the Lord. That's why I tell people at Anchor Fellowship Church, if you mow the grass, mow it as unto the Lord. Amen. If you clean and commodes, do it as unto the Lord. Come on, man. Amen. Don't do it for me. Amen. Do it for the Lord. Praise God. God. Amen. Amen. Listen. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. Amen. Praise God. Don't be double minded. Amen. A double minded man is unstable in his way. In other words, what he said. Amen. When a man, amen, is focused. Amen. He's got God in his life. Amen. He's doing the work of the Lord. Praise God. Listen to what he says. The whole body will be full of light. And he says, Thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. He don't say half full of light, half full of darkness. He says, Amen. Light or darkness. In other words, friend, Amen. You either serving God or you ain't. Ain't no half handed work in this in this thing that we're doing here tonight. Amen. Praise God. You either got to be selling out, doing all you can do. God knows your limitations. He knows my limitations. Amen. But praise God. Amen. The limitations of men you said. Amen. Ain't God's limitations. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Don't have any limitations. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen. Read on a little further. I'm going to quit. I want to try to read this whole scripture. The whole scripture. Amen. But no man can serve what? For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man, matter, material things. Therefore I say unto you, what you shall eat, or what you... This is where really where I want us to focus. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought. This is my, this is my text for tonight. Take no thought. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Say. 
think. So we know, hey man, tonight that we're defined by our own aspirations. Some people want to be uh, uh, be successful on their job. Some people want to be successful with this, successful with that. We shoot for the degree. Some people go to college and get degrees. Some people go to work. And just, uh, all of these things. Hey man, God knows we need all these things. God knows we need bread to eat. God knows we need something to drink. Hey man, God knows all these things. He knows we need a roof over our head. Listen to what he says. Gentile seek, but your for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all of these things. Y'all see what I'm talking about? So God knows that you need clothes on your back. God knows you need food to eat. God knows all of these things. Amen. We seek after, we hunger after, we try and desire to have more of them. Amen. Take take the fall. Amen. Don't sit limitations on the dimensions of life. Listen, I believe if we'll be good stewards of what God gives us, amen, I believe he'll bless us. If we pray and ask God to help us be good stewards of a little bit with God, in other words, if I got two loaves of bread, amen, it's like I tell my children, if I got a piece of bread, you got a piece of bread. Always. Always. If I got something needs, you got something needs. And I say that to the people. If I got something needs, you got something needs. Amen. Amen. Yes, I ain't going to see nobody go hungry if it's within my life. I'll, I'll even break my sandwich in half and give you a piece of it. Amen. That's how far I go with it. Amen. Listen to me tonight. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. So in all of these man-made things, all these dimensions and all these aspects of life that we know we got to have, that we know we need, amen, for life here on earth. When he said that the Bible says, Jesus says, that we know it, we, he knows that we need all of these things. Amen. But Jesus puts a spin on it right here. He says, but if we won't seek after the things, he says, God knows you need it. This is to me tonight. If you need a vehicle, amen, God knows. If you desire, God knows you need a vehicle. He knows it. You pray. I believe in secret. God will bless you with a vehicle. I believe that. You believe it. I believe it tonight. Amen. God, he might not be the Cadillac or the Rolls Royce or whatever, amen, but it'll be a vehicle. Uh, commencement, amen, with what you believe God for. But he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things shall be added to you. He says here, listen to me. The things that we seek after, I'm going to drive this point home. God is limitless. But the things that we seek after, God knows we need them. He knows we need them. He knows we need shoes. He knows we need money. He knows we need food. Amen. But Jesus said, if we would hunger and thirst like righteousness, if we would seek God, amen, for a limitless thing, amen, for a greater dimension, amen, for life and life more abundantly, amen, he said, praise God, he'll give you some food to eat, clothes to wear. So now we're talking about the dimensions of life. Sometimes we limit God by our own pursuits. Do y'all see that? Therefore, take therefore, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Listen to me today. If we <laughs> seek God first and His righteousness and desire to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, love God, Amen. With all our heart, mind, and soul. And I believe this, if you work in a $10 ministry, and I use money as a reference because that's what everybody can identify with. Amen. If you work in a $10 ministry and you're faithful with a $10 ministry, I believe God will give you a $20 ministry. I believe he'll move bread with you on the Amen. But if God can't trust you, amen, to do all you can do, amen. We should, hey. I've never refused anybody to preach but one man and I'm not going to call his name because he looks at this video. He'll know I'm talking about it, but he will know I'm talking about it. Amen. And it was on a Sunday. He asked me to come and preach Sunday night. And I'd work Saturday night. And I had to go back and work Sunday night. But I'd been up all day because we was having a function at church. And this pastor asked me when I come and preach for him that night. And I said, well, if I had if I had just a little more notice, I might have could have got somebody to stay over and work over, fill in for me, whatever. So I had to turn it down because I had to go to work. And that preacher has never, ever, 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 and I love this man, and he's a good man, and I appreciate him, and I love talking to him, and I think he's a great pastor. But he has never asked me to preach for him again, ever. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But he is the only man that I ever turned down to preach. <laughs> I've always tried to make a, a way. And I can remember. You know why? Because
because God gave me a desire to want to preach the word. I know everybody don't want to hear the word of God. Amen. Because it convicts. And it, and, it, and it causes turmoil in your soul. Amen. Because listen, we as human beings, we strive after the worldly things. Amen. But the Bible, praise God, tells us, amen, to open our minds up to the spiritual things, praise God. The things of God, amen. The things you can't touch. Amen. The things you can't see. Amen. The things that means more. Amen. Than the material things that we seek after on this side of eternity. In the sixth chapter of Matthew, Jesus Christ is telling us how, amen, not to set limitations on our life. How to open our life up and make it limitless. See, your life has dimensions today. You are defined by your own thinking. Amen. You cannot farm a thousand acres with a hundred acre mentality. You got to try to farm a thousand acres with a, with a four or three thousand or seven thousand. You might farm a hundred acres with a seven thousand. A little bit of equipment and all that. You, farm, you get out and try to farm a thousand acres with a four or seven thousand. See what happens. You better have you a John Deere uh, 8230 or 8220, some big tractor, amen, about 12 rows, amen, planting power, amen, big hairs and all that kind of stuff, Brother Terry. Why? Amen. Because you cannot farm a thousand acres on a hundred acre mentality. We cannot reach this world, amen, if our mind is only limited, amen, to the four walls of this church. That's right. Amen. Not reach the world if our if our <coughs> ministry is only limited to the money that we got in the bank. Well, we can't do that. We ain't got the next amount of dollars in the bank, Lord. Hey, Amen. Why not just jump out there and say we're gonna do it? Amen. And we'll let God worry about putting the money in the bank. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. The mentions. With where are we at? Because we, we we go to where we want to be at because we trust God. He tells us we'll seek Him in secret. He'll reward us openly. In what? In what? Will he? In our giving, alms, in our giving, in our prayer life, we're seeking God. Amen. All of these things, every dimension of our life, God says, I'm an open door. And He says in the scripture, a door that I open, no man can shut. Praise God. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some people, amen, that's ready, amen, to throw some doors open. I don't want this church to be defined by my limitations. I don't want them to say, well, I heard Anchor Fellowship Church, you know, their pastor works and he does all this and all that. Amen. And he don't get to visit. Amen. I don't want you to visit because I, I have to work. And if you don't have a job, then you visit. Actually, it's the church's responsibility to visit anyway. I don't know who changed it around and said it's the pastor's responsibility to visit the sick. Amen. And to suffer. Amen. It's just as much the church's responsibility as the pastor. Amen. But you know what? They'll kick a pastor out for not visiting. Amen. But they won't kick a deacon or somebody sitting on the pew out for not visiting. Yeah. Did it say in the 25th chapter of Matthew he was just going to ask that question to the preacher? No. Listen to me, friend. I want to be real with you tonight. We don't need to limit God. I don't want Anchor Fellowship Church to be limited by my incapacity. I know I failed in a lot of ways, and I know it. Amen. But I don't want this church to be limited by my failures. Amen. I'm looking for some people, amen, that want to do something. Amen. Whether I can do it or not, amen, I want you to be able to do it. Praise God. We got, we got a building here for everybody. You, praise God, not just for me. Amen. Amen. My name's on the sign. Amen. But the name above it, amen, Acre Fellowship Church, don't only represent me, but it represents everybody. Right. It goes to church here. So why should we define ourselves by our own dimensions? How far we can see. How far our money goes. How far does it go? You ever heard people testify, hey, I've, turned, I've turned it over to God. And God, I don't know how we paid our bills. Somehow I know all our bills got paid. I've heard people testify that. I don't know how that old car made it. The mechanic said it wouldn't last but another hundred miles, maybe. Amen. But we still driving on that old clunker. It's been knocking at the mechanic said it won't knock very much longer because it's going to knock a hole in the side of the motor. But hey, that's been five years ago and we still drive Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they don't know. Hey, somebody got a prayer closet somewhere to pray. Right. Hey, Amen. God said, you know what I'll do? I'll take that old knocking motor and I'll make the believer out of the land. Raise up some empty feet. I love you tonight. I want to pray tonight if it's all right.
Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, I come humbly but boldly before you tonight, Lord, and I ask you, Lord, tonight to reach down and stir our hearts, Lord, stir up and stir our minds, Lord, if we broke the bread of life, Lord, that bread, that, that spiritual nourishment, Lord, that we need, Lord, to lift our bodies up and encourage the spirits. Lord, we're looking at the spiritual man tonight, Lord, we know, Lord, we're looking at the man, Lord, that we can see tonight, body, limitations, afflictions, hindrances, Lord, but tonight we're not looking at that afflicted body, but Lord, tonight we're looking at that spiritual body. Lord, we know you said in the scriptures that it's not the things that go in the mouth of the father of the man, but it's from the abundance of the heart that the man speaketh, amen, to the father of the man. Lord, I pray, Lord, tonight that we'd be able to take this word, Lord, it's been broken on tonight. Lord, I pray, Lord, tonight that you would open each and every one of our minds to an unlimited access, Lord. We know that you're not limited tonight. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we not be bound by man-made dimensions. Lord, but tonight we'd be loose, Lord, and we Lord, have victory, Lord, in the fact, Lord, that we're going to be able to do abundantly and above and beyond that that we can even imagine. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would put this desire, this hunger into your people once again. Lord, that we want to assemble ourselves, Lord, in your sanctuary, in your name, and Lord, we praise you, not for the benefits, Lord, but just because we have a desire to show you how much we love you tonight. Lord, I thank you for the gift and the promise of life that you gave us at Calvary. Lord, I thank you for every affliction, every, every, every throng of pain, Lord, that you suffered, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for every drop of blood, Lord, that you shed. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the drops of blood that run down the brow of your face, Lord. I thank you for the ones that run out of your hand as they grow the nails, Lord, my nails. Lord, I just ask you, Lord, tonight, Lord, we know, Lord, that we expect you, Lord, you to move and you to speak, Lord, through the Spirit, Lord. And I believe tonight, Lord, that you have spoken. Lord, and I ask you, Lord, to lift us, lift us up, Lord, out of a world that is defined by the mentions, Lord, and give us, Lord, that, Lord, that we should desire, Lord, to seek after, Lord, that unlimited, Lord, to be able to tap into you, Lord, Lord, that we can be soul winners, Lord, that we cannot be defined by these four walls and by this organization, Lord, and the money that we have in the bank, Lord, and this and that, Lord, but we would be defined, Lord, by that, Lord, that we do, praise God, because we're seeking you, Lord, tonight, amen, for you to bless us openly, Lord, and give us that, Lord, that we desire souls, hallelujah, Lord, souls for an hour, Lord, we're seeking nothing else. We're seeking no kind of praise from men, Lord, we're seeking no kind of praise, no kind of name in the newspaper, Lord, we're not seeking any kind of television, Lord, we're not seeking any of that, Lord, we're seeking your face, Lord, for souls. Lord, I want to be, Lord, tonight a light, Lord, that shines out and illuminates on everybody, no matter what color they are, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that this organization's heart is as mine. Lord, that we would be a light that would illuminate to all people, Lord, tonight. Lord, we're seeking your face, Lord. I'm seeking your face tonight. Lord, I have a high expectation of your mercy and your grace, Lord, and I also have a high expectation, Lord, of your blessings, Lord, tonight. And I know you will bless us, Lord, if we prepare our hearts to be seekers, Lord, tonight, and not be limited by worldly dimensions, Lord, but be loose, Lord, in the spiritual. Lord, that we can go and be that worker in the field, Lord, that gains a soul, Lord, praise God. Lord, we're looking for you to help us, lead us, guide us, direct us as a church, as a people, as an individual. Lord, that we'll be a better part, Lord, of a group, Lord, today. Lord, if I can be a finger tonight, Lord, I want to be the best finger that I can be, Lord. If this church is a finger, I want this church to be the best finger in the house of God, as the house of God, Lord, in the body of Christ. Lord, I want to edify and lift you up tonight, Lord, as we pray. I ask your blessings upon each and every one that's coming tonight, Lord, all the ones that's here. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would bless them, Lord, give them an understanding of your word. Open your word up, Lord, shine a light on them, Lord, and it be uh, engrafted into their hearts, Lord, that they could walk with Spiritual life, Lord, and I'll be bound by dimensions, Lord, tonight. I praise you. I give you honor and I give you glory. 